and we're back guys i hope you've had a good summer and uh i'm, I'm just recovering from covid at the time of recording this and uh it, it's been a few months since i've done a podcast uh so bear with me might be a little rusty so jumping right into it uh this video uh this podcast is about getting off to a good start with your CPAP machine if you've been prescribed it um for uh, obstructive sleep apnea or sleep disordered breathing this video will also help uh, if you're getting used to a BiPAP machine a bi-level machine or an auto pap uh, an auto adjusting positive airway pressure machine and um so be before we start into that a little background uh, in case you're, you're not familiar with me my name is Savan I'm a counselor and a coach uh, here in Portland. I've worked for, for Kaiser Permanente for uh, 22 years. And before that, I worked for uh, Oregon Health Sciences University, the local uh, research um, uh, medical school, as a sleep technician. So I've been helping people sleep better for 25 years. My wife and I, we were research assistants and sleep techs uh, together uh, uh, early in our marriage and Julie she taught me how to do sleep studies so for a few years helped people uh, by watching them sleep doing sleep studies and determining whether or not they needed uh, a seat CPAP machine to help with their snoring and uh, apnea sleep apnea obstructive sleep apnea um, we, we also did uh, research on light therapy melatonin and uh, insomnia um, so if uh, if you're having sleep trouble and um, are wrestling with whether or not to get help for it, talk to your doctor about it, do a sleep study, or um, uh, you might be interested in this video, at least parts of it. Um, but I, I've already, I've done some other videos about sleep disorders in general and what it's like to have a sleep study. Um, so you might uh, pause and, and, and watch those first. Uh, but this is for folks that, have gone through a sleep clinic evaluation. They've talked to their primary care doctor. They've, they've been referred to a sleep clinic. They've seen a sleep doctor. They've had a sleep study overnight, whether it's in a sleep lab or uh, at home. Uh, that, that's happening a lot now, home sleep studies. And it's been, uh, they've been diagnosed with uh, sleep apnea and they've been prescribed a CPAP machine. Um, and this video is also for folks that that uh, that has happened in the past. They've tried CPAP, they it just hasn't worked for them, and it's been sitting in their closet. Um, but they're tired, and they're thinking about trying it again, but they didn't have a good experience with it. And so this is that that's one of the keys um, to being successful with it is making friends with it, getting comfortable with it being able to tolerate it and get comfortable. So uh, that's what this video is all about. So there's a few things that uh, make it difficult to adjust to a CPAP machine. Um, uh, one is uh, disappointment. Um, being disappointed with how it feels, how you start out, um, and it's not working for for, for me, I, I just did air, air quotes for those of you listening on the podcast. Um, uh, I tried it. It didn't work. Well, we're going to figure out why it didn't work and figure out what you need to change or do to make it work. So um, the, the solution for disappointment is realistic and healthy expectations. So we're going to talk about mindset and, and expectations going into this. The other thing and related to it. It's feeling disappointed or feeling discouraged. And um, and so uh, we're going to talk about uh, how, how to work through discouragement. Um, and then the two other key things, discomfort. Um, you know, I want to sleep better. I'm willing to try it. I'm willing to do it. It's just too uncomfortable. And so we're going to talk about the two main forms of discomfort are mask, mask fit, and mask seal and then the second thing discomfort with the airflow right like i feel like i'm suffocating um i feel like i'm not getting getting enough air i can't breathe um 
And for a lot of folks, the problem is I start out the night fine. Um, you know, I, I'm willing to try it and I'm, I, I want it to work. But halfway through the night, I'm taking it off either consciously or I'm, I'm not even waking up and, and it's coming off and I wake up with it off my face. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, and then the fourth thing is uh, that makes it hard to get used to is disconnection. Uh, tr trying to work through it, work this through on your own by yourself with no one to, to help or talk to, to get support. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hearing more and more stories of people getting prescribed CPAP machines and the durable medical equipment people just like Amazon, just like drop it off on your porch and, um, you know, you get a box and good luck. You get a website, you get videos and what do I do with this? So we're going to talk about that. Um, uh, oh, so besides doing sleep studies, did that for several years, watched people sleep. And for almost seven years, I helped hundreds, if not thousands of people get started on their CPAP machine and help coach them to get used to it um, and get used to a smart talk. So I'm going to talk about the common troubleshooting things that people experience when they get started with CPAP that make it confusing, that make it dis disappointing, discouraging, and, and dis um, uncomfortable. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, when I was working at the sleep lab, uh, uh, every morning, we would set up folks that met the criteria to get the treatment for the CPAP machine. Uh, uh, we, we'd set up anywhere from four to eight people with CPAP machines like every morning. Uh, so, you know, uh, over the, and then uh, I would, uh, we would do groups of setting people up with their CPAP machine, you know, uh, anywhere from eight to 15 people in, in a group. So I've, I've worked with lots of people um, trying to get, off to a good start. Why? Why is getting off to a good start so important? Well, when whenever you try something hard or something new, uh, it's uh, it, you, you can develop a habit, a, a positive experience with it or a negative experience with something, right? And so, uh, the the longer it takes to get comfortable with something, the more likely it is that you're going to give up and um um and, and feel like it's not worth the effort the 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 discomfort the it's not worth the learning curve to stick with something so the the research shows that the first two weeks after getting a cpap machine taking it home is pretty crucial to um compliance with the with the treatment and so uh b besides setting people up with the machine i i uh, talked check in with them on the phone or people would call in with their problems and I'd walk them through getting used to their machine. And so um, I think it's Jim Rohr. And I first heard of it from this concept from John Maxwell. I talk about it sometimes on the podcast, the law of diminishing intent. The law of diminishing intent is the longer you go, like you, you decide to do something or want to do something, but the longer you go without doing it, the less likely it is that you're going to be able to do it or your follow through because you get more practice making excuses or talking yourself out of it. Um, you get more practice doing that than actually doing the positive habit or the positive change that you want to make. And so, um, so expectations, um, like one, some folks, they, they use the CPAP machine and they they can only tolerate it for like an hour or two or four hours like half the night and which i want to say and encourage you that that's better than nothing using it for an hour or three is better than not using it at all especially if you have moderate to severe sleep apnea um so if you have an uh, ahi an apnea hypopnea index and that's a number that your um is on your sleep study report um or something that your doctor has told you to diagnose you with obstructive sleep apnea that's the number the ahi is the number of times your sleep is disrupted per hour on average 
and um uh it, it's been a while since I've been a sleep tech, but the, the, what I remember the criteria is five to 15 disruptions per hour, um, you know, uh, waking up uh, every, uh, tw you know, 12 to, to um, uh, <clears throat> oh, let me do the math, uh, every uh, 12 to four minutes uh, is considered mild uh, apnea. Um uh, 15 to 30 is considered moderate. Uh, so every waking up every four to two minutes is considered moderate and then 30 or higher disruptions per, per hour, you know, waking up every two minutes or more is considered severe. So, um, you know, it, uh, using a CPAP machine for, for an hour or, or, or half the night, you're, you're cutting out, out, potentially dozens of interruptions of your sleep the thing is um if you spend the second half of the night without the machine on you take it off halfway through the night uh even though you're sleeping better overall when you wake up you still might feel beat up and so uh you know having a, a realistic expectation that it might take time for you to physically really feel the full benefit of improved sleep. Um, not everybody uh, uh, has an amazing night in the sleep lab. Um, and, and, and sometimes that can be, you know, a negative to overcome. But sometimes people have like the, the best night of sleep. Um, and uh, it, that, that happened for my father when he went to the sleep, uh, his sleep study I remember him coming back home and saying that was the first time that I slept seven hours in a row that I got seven hours of sleep that, that he could remember for years. Um, and he couldn't believe when they were waking up, like it I hardly felt that he, he had slept. And so that that's one thing that I love about people getting off to a good um, start to using their CPAP machine is if once you, once you get through, half a night or more and have a, a night or two of, of good uh, quality sleep, deep sleep, um, you know, it, 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 it kind of gets sold uh, on it. And, um, and so that, 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 that's why getting off to a good start can be really helpful so that you associate the CPAP machine with good quality sleep. You feel hundred percent better. You feel like it, it's worth putting on, um, versus, uh, you know, feeling frustrated, feeling discouraged. Um, and, um, you know, uh, a lot of people that have, uh, untreated sleep apnea, um, sometimes it goes for years and they're just tired of being tired. And so, you know, it, it, after 80, 90% of, of the process of getting treated or evaluated and treated and diagnosed. And then pres the prescription that, that can take months uh, from primary care to getting the CPAP machine. That's for some people, especially during the pandemic, especially during the pandemic, it could take a year of trying to get help for your sleep. Um, so like 90% getting used to that CPAP machine and being able to sleep with it consistently. That's that last 10%. Um, so if you're struggling, I just want to keep, encourage you um, to, to keep going and, and cross the finish line. Um, uh, and um, so uh, oh, I want to go backwards because I didn't really um, um, underline this enough. Um, healthy expectations. What's success? The goal isn't to use the CPAP machine. This is going to help you. It'll help to remind yourself. The goal isn't to use the CPAP machine. The goal is to sleep better and feel better and 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 uh, be healthier. Now, um, every well, I just state made that statement. Everybody has to find their why to overcome the difficulties. So, for some people, um, they they might like say, "I'm going to pull the CPAP machine out of the closet because I've spent hundreds of dollars." on this equipment and I don't want it to be unused. So that, you know, they might be more motivated. Like I don't want to waste money. Um, uh, for some people, um, my why my motivation 
is I'm, I feel miserable. I can't concentrate. Um, I'm grumpy and irritable. You know, I'm, I don't like the, the version, the, the asleep deprived version of myself and nobody else does either. And so I want to feel better. Um, so that's their why some people, it, blood pressure, heart disease, um, muscle aches, joint pain, headaches, you know, physically, I feel terrible. I, I, I need to do this for my health. Um, you know, I, I feel run down. I feel beat up. And so, and, and, yeah, I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of waking up exhausted. And, um, you know, I'm tired of feeling more tired when I woke up, wake up than when I went to bed. Um, so I need to get used to this machine and, and sleep better and breathe better. Um, so whatever, whatever it is that you're needing and hoping for, um, it can help you to remind yourself that th this is, that it's worth it. This is why I'm doing this. Okay. Um, and one thing that can help with that, it can be overwhelming. Like, you know, you try it and you, you, you're, you can't use it for 30 minutes um, or you can't even get to sleep with it. Um, so don't, don't uh, be patient with the process. Um, and uh, uh, early on, it can help uh, to set expectations, set the goal, set the goal of just consistently putting it on each day, just putting it on, not wearing it all night, just the habit of putting it on. And uh, th th this is an idea from Atomic Habits and Tiny Habits uh, by James Clear and uh, BJ Fogg. Um, and it's also an idea from, uh, is it, uh, laws of it, ex execution where the getting a good night of sleep and being able to use the CPAP machine, um, all night is a, an outcome goal. It is a lag measure. Um, and putting on the machine breathing with it, eventually getting to sleep, and then eventually being able to sleep with it longer and longer. That's the lead measure, L-E-A-D measure. That's the behavioral goal. So if you do that consistently, and that's the tiny step or atomic habit, is just making the habit of putting it on each day. Eventually, with consistency and perseverance, you'll be able to use it uh, all night and feel great. Um, and, um, so just making it your goal to put it on, getting a good seal and a comfortable fit and relaxing and breathing with it and learning how to breathe with it is, is, is helpful. Okay. So, uh, let me take a look at my notes. I'm sorry. I, I didn't practice this talk. So I, you know, I just hit record. Um, so I, I, I might be bouncing around a little bit. So, um, let's see, I got this machine. Okay. Um, there might be some fear, um, or embarrassment or, or stigma to, to get over. Um, so let me address that a little bit. Like some people are like, there's no way in hell I'm going to wear a CPAP machine. I'm not going to wear a machine, um, because of the appearance of it or like the fear association of like, ah, if I'm wearing a machine, then that means like life is over. Right. Like that's associated with being super old on a respirator and on supplemental oxygen and, uh, you know, uh, so pride and ego and vanity and appearance can get in the way of like having this contraption on my face to be able to sleep. Um, and you know, so, some couples, uh, or some people they're like, ah, oh, that's not very sexy right? Having a mask over my face and a tubing. And, you know, th these, these masks, the CPAP mask machines, um, th sometimes they're used in sci-fi movies or action movies. And it's like associated with something weird. Um, you know, uh, like, you, you know, you're in a coma or incapacitated or something like that. And you see people with, with a mask, uh, on to, to breathe. So there's a negative stigma, um, to, that's that can be associated with it and so 
what I try to encourage folks, uh, especially with like the intimacy thing, is when you're tired, you're wiped out, you feel cr crappy, beat up, and like, you know, you have low energy. Um, you're snoring. Um, and some people, they're, they're like struggling with, with their metabolism because they're sleep deprived and maybe struggling with their weight and, and body image and how they feel. You're already probably not feeling that sexy already. And, and definitely like loud snoring and, and breathing with your mouth open all night and having dragon breath is not very sexy for your partner either. Um, so if you, if we took a poll of, uh, you know, uh, of partners, uh, or let me back up, <laughs> take that poll. Um, you know, if, if they would like to get under interrupted sleep and have you not snoring and, and gasping for breath and pausing and breathing, there, there was actually a study of folks that had at least 20 disruptions in their sleep per hour. So moderate. Um, snoring and apnea. They did a sleep study with their partner also having a sleep study, you know, so they did a sleep study on both of the couple. And what they found was the, the partner's uh, sleep, the partner that who did not have sleep apnea, their sleep was disrupted uh, about 10 times per hour, just from the snore, uh, the sound and the tossing and turning and the twitching and kicking of their person, their partner who was not being, you know, not treated for the apnea. And so, um, not only will you be feeling better, um, but, but your partner probably will too. And, um, so the, uh, uh again, uh, the problem that you're trying to solve being tired or, or exhausted or, or, you know, the cardiovascular challenge that untreated sleep apnea has on your, on your body, the effect of poor quality sleep. Is it worth the, the embarrassment of having to, to wear something while you're sleeping? Um, you know, and that's something that you'll have to, to decide. Um, and the, I think one of my professors, he, he, uh, would say when, when the, uh, the, the pain of saying the same outweighs the pain of changing, then, then you'll change. Um, and so hopefully you're, you're motivated and you can pay attention to, to, to what's motivating you, um, the, in the positive sense, um, Okay, enough about that. Um, feel free to comment uh, if, if you have any other I ideas about that. So br getting off to a good start. You, you open up the box, it got dropped off on your porch or you're bringing it home from the sleep lab and you've been fit with a mask. Um, and so w w one question that can help with being successful with uh, your machine is where am I going to put it? And so you can put it on the floor. Uh, there, there's two meter tubing. So there's plenty of tubing to, to be able to reach for, for most people. You can put it on your nightstand level. And some people, they put it on a shelf, like above, behind them on the headboard or, you know. Um, and so you can get it situated. Um, I'm filming this in the summer, but in the winter, it can help if your tubing is not heated. It can help to get it situated so that you put the tubing up through the blanket and you can warm the tubing with your body weight or uh, 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 body heat um, underneath and coming up from um, underneath. Some folks, they toss and turn a lot. And so it can help to have the tubing up overhead from a headboard um, or up behind your pillow with some slack so you can turn. And uh, each, each type of mask has a swivel, so you should be able to comfortably move from side to side. Um, so that getting it set up kind of where, where you want it situated. Most machines, uh, these days, uh, or I'm, I'll, I'll pause on that. That I was about to talk about the humidifier and, but that's the, about dis discomfort. Um, 
So one of the keys to being able to uh, uh, get comfortable with the mask and keep it on is getting a good seal and a good uh, comfortable fit with the mask that fits over your over your face or directly in your nostrils the nasal pillows type of machine of mask interface instead of getting a seal around your nose there's ones that go directly in your 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 nares your nostrils um and for some folks uh they prefer to have a full face mask it covers their nose and their mouth um and so uh it, it's kind of like goldilocks you you don't want it too tight uh, because you, you can tighten it tight enough to get a good seal, but the pressure on your face eventually can be uncomfortable. And so you'll, your face will get sore. So you, you'll want to remove it um, after a while. So you, it can be too tight. If it's too loose, it'll be comfortable. But if you move um, uh, just from moving and the, and it, the um, it tugging on the, the hose, it can break the seal. Or um, you can be fine, and then when you turn and hit the pillow, it can leak. Um, and so you, you want to try to find that middle ground. And it takes practice. It takes practice uh, to do that. Um, if if you're fortunate enough to like get set up with it um, in uh, an office, a, a DME equipment office, where they have a technician help you adjust the straps and teach you how to adjust the straps, um, and try to find a, a good fit that that's helpful. Um, but it can be difficult to do that at home on your own. If you're, you know, pulling out the equipment from the bag and from the box uh, on your own. Um, and so, <clears throat> so my suggestion is, uh, is to use the mask. Um, like I said, get used to that at the habit of putting it on and adjusting it to, uh, to get it comfortable, good seal and uh, a comfortable fit and to just use it during the daytime and get comfortable breathing with having it on your face and breathing with it um, during the daytime. And so just sitting in a recliner or on your couch or laying down um, so that you can uh, just get comfortable with it, make friends with it is, is what, what I, I call it. Um, and so the goal is is just comfort and and being able to breathe with it not necessarily going to sleep with it and so turning on the tv or turning on some relaxing calming music can also help um self-soothe and and any anxiousness or stress about wearing it about using it it will help you um uh, be, get more comfortable uh, with it now one thing that i would do if i had time with patients in, in the sleep lab. So my office used to be like, uh, where they would do sleep studies. And so there was like a bed in my office for several years is if folks had the time, I would set them up with the machine and then invite them to lay down and just get comfortable, get situated in, in the position that they would sleep at home. And so that we could adjust it correctly and kind of give them a feel for it. And then I just have them practice deep breathing and relaxing with it. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, I, I dim the lights um, and sometimes I'd slip out of the room and they'd be able to sleep for 15 minutes or 30 minutes. And um, because I just wanted them to have a positive experience being able to get to sleep with it on. And, you know, very often they... The, they, they'd be sleeping hard and if they had time, you know, let them sleep for even longer and they'd wake up and feel like, like really refreshed because they're getting better quality sleep than, than they have in a long time. Um, so th that can be helpful if you have trouble getting to sleep with the CPAP machine on at night is to use it during the daytime and uh, just get used to it. Okay. So comfort with the mask, a few things, a few other things that get, uh, difficult with uh, the mask. Oh, 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 why? Why the nasal pillows? Why the full face mask? So some folks, when they use the mask that fits over their nose, they can feel claustrophobic. 
That's one of the things that, that can cause discomfort. It can, <clears throat> sometimes when you put the machine on, you it can feel like, ah, I'm not getting enough air. And so it's uh, it can help to mentally rehearse or tell yourself that you're actually getting more air than you need. That's why it's it feels like you're you're not getting enough air. So, um, it, it, if you've ever like been going down the the uh, dr driving and stuck your head out the the window, and it feels like the air is getting sucked out of you, and you feel short of breath, that's kind of the experience some people feel with the CPAP machine. And so, the the um. Most CPAP machines uh, start out with four centimeters of uh, water pressure, uh, and the um, that airflow. the The thing about it is the uh, the airflow that you're getting with the machine you don't need when you're awake. So that um, and and I'm doing this on on video, um, so for podcast listeners, um, so the airflow going in when you're um, is designed to open up a closed obstructed airway and splint it open to widen it and, um, so that you can breathe um, when you're asleep. When you're awake, you don't need that. So all that airflow coming in, you're having to work harder than usual to exhale against that pressure coming in. And so that's something new. It's a new feeling. And that's that feeling can be uh, uncomfortable. It's something to get used to. And so, um, uh, one thing that, that can help and, and you can, um, if after a while, if you try, uh, the machine and the starting pressure is, it feels too low, um, like you're not getting enough air. One way to experiment to, to, to see if more airflow would help is when you have the mask on, you can snore, um, even with your mouth closed, you and I'm going to demonstrate for you. So you can, with your mouth closed, you can, you can snore still. But if you do that with a CPAP machine on, the vibrate your machine will pick up on the vibration uh, of that, and it will automatically adjust. If you have an auto pap, it will automatically adjust and increase the pressure. And uh, if you have the display, you can see as you like snore into the machine, you can see the machine responding to you and the pressure increasing. And then you can see on the display what pressure you're at. And then you can use that experiment to dis to see which starting pressure that you feel most comfortable with while you're awake with the machine on. Uh, that might be a lot to understand uh, if you're just getting started. Um, uh, but but hopefully you uh, feel free to ask questions in, in the comments or, or ask your uh, medical equipment uh, person. Um, the the machines can be set to start at a, a higher minimum pressure. Most m machines go from t four to twenty centimeters water pressure, or or maybe even twenty five. BiPAP machines can go even higher. Um, and so for, for some folks, that four is a little too low. If you've used CPAP for a while, um, sometimes that 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 starting pressure is too low, and so. Um, most machines nowadays have Bluetooth or, or a chip in the back that can program and you can call in and, and say, um, you know, ask your provider um, it, to increase that pressure, starting pressure to maybe like a six or seven it, as needed. Um, but in the meantime, you can increase that starting pressure yourself by snoring into the machine. Um, okay, so that starting pressure. It can, it can feel a lot because you don't need it. The other thing that can make the airflow feel like it, it's too strong or too high is if you, if it leaks, if the mask leaks. And so, um, when you have a good seal, the CPAP machine is pretty, it, it, it should be quiet. And it, like some folks, they, they they feel like they're not getting enough air or sometimes you don't even realize that the machine is on at that starting pressure but if you open your mouth you'll 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 realize that there's airflow or if you pull the mask off it'll get loud and it'll rush it'll you know it'll it'll blow and 
the the reason for it is there's a concept uh air uh, positive airway pressure but it's kind of like a, a a garden hose right when you turn on the airflow and and it's just uh and if you restrict the flow with your thumb then it shoots out harder right and so at four centimeters or five centimeters of of pressure it might not seem that high if you have a good seal but if you leak then it feels like the air is rushing out and it, you feel like you're in a wind tunnel so um uh, one way to, to 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 make sure that you're comfortable is making sure that you have a good seal. Now, um, the the mask uh, are there. There's different styles. There are diff different um, materials. They they keep trying to make them lighter and more comfortable. Uh, and uh, you know, technology. They they they've they've made the machines uh, very quiet. They're like white noise machines are quieter than white noise machines or a fan going on low in your room. Um, sometimes the fan of like a computer is louder than a CPAP machine when everything's like uh, connected properly. So noise shouldn't be a problem um, if, if you've got a, a good seal. So getting a good seal with the nasal mask, um, a few, uh, an, a few more tips. Sometimes if you, uh, you can get a good seal, but if it's too tight on your head, um, on, on the crown of your head, sometimes you, you start out the night okay, but the tension of the straps, the Velcro straps, kind of squeeze and then it can ride up your head. And you can wake up with your nose sore because the, 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 the mask is ridden up. So sometimes loosening the straps as, as uh, loosening the straps and having them as low as possible uh, along like eyebrow level for the top straps. And um, the straps that are lower uh, um, b below your ears, instead of them having like them right on your cheek and like right underneath your ears, it can help to have them lower, like really loosen them and kind of get them uh, down like below your jaw. And so um, instead of like, you know, this bump, uh, this little occipital bump in, in the back of your know, uh, your skull, your head, making sure that you have it kind of low uh, underneath that um, and low on your neck. That that can also prevent it from from riding too high. Um, if you're using the nasal pillows that fit directly in your nose, the advantage of, of that is that there's less surface area to have a good uh, good seal. You you know you're not having to have good seal around your entire nose and, and your upper lip. Um, the disadvantage sometimes of, of nasal pillows is that this is a sensitive area of our bodies and not used to having, a, you know, plastic. It's, it's kind of like, you know, sometimes your ears are sensitive to earbuds. It can be um, uncomfortable to have that pressure uh, on your nose um, at first. And so sometimes it can. Um, so, ag again, it's an experiment with um, uh, balancing the, the seal and, and the comfort. Um, whether you're wearing a nasal mask or a full face mask, another thing that can help is, uh, shaving, um, and, uh, shaving at night. Um, if you're not used to shaving at night, you prefer to shave in the morning. It can help to, to shave at night. Um, and, and, uh, for some people, uh, you know, considering getting rid of the beard, the goatee, um, in order to sleep better. Um, so that's an experiment, uh, to, it, it can be worth trying if you're struggling to get a comfortable seal, most, most mask, full face and nasal, you can tighten it tight enough, even if you have a mustache or a beard to get a good seal, depending on the type of, you know, how coarse your, your mustache and beard is. Um, but if you're feeling like you're putting so much pressure that it's hurting your teeth or hurting your face, then consider shaving. And it's worth the experiment. It, it'll always grow back, right? Um, uh, uh, but if you don't want to give up a, a luxurious beard, um, then it might be helpful to switch to the nasal pillows directly in, in your nose. Let's see. Oh, um, <clears throat> in regards to a mask fit, mask seal. One thing that can um, disrupt, uh, make you uncomfortable or, or cause a leak um, during the night is if you 
get situated at bedtime, you, you, you get a good seal. It's nice and comfortable. You lay on your back and go to sleep. And then during the night, you turn and it hits the pillow and then it leaks and then it blows into your eye, cold, dry air. And then your eye wakes up stinging. Um, and, or, uh, uh, so what I recommend for that, especially if you know that you tend to sleep on your side <clears throat> is to start out on your side and adjust your mask for, um, a good seal on, on your side. And so some, depending on the mask, sometimes it's fine for the mask to hit the pillow and it'll leak and you just have to tighten it up a little bit on the opposite side. So it's fine to have contact with the pillow or the, um, some types of masks, they're a little, kind, they're kind of bulky. And so it's not helpful to, to hit the pillow. So what I recommend is kind of folding your pillow in half or getting off to the, to the edge of the pillow and trying to have the pillow in contact with your cheek, but have the, your mask hanging off the side. And depending on the firmness or the softness of your pillow, you might have to experiment and maybe get a different type of pillow. Um, you know, sometimes if it's soft and you're really sunk into it, it it's soft enough that it doesn't disrupt the mask. Uh, but some folks, it's it's too soft and you sink into the pillow and it always hits the mask. So you, it might help to get a, a firmer pillow. So you have to experiment with that. So, um, it can help to just uh, roll up a towel and kind of tuck it into your neck. And um, that can also help prevent the mask from hitting the side uh, of the pillow. Now, some people, they say, that's not going to work for me. I can't wear a mask on my face because I sleep on my stomach. And what I recommend to, to folks that uh, have that objection or concern is that, well, well one reason, well, well, let's look at why you're, you, you've learned to sleep on your stomach. So some folks, they learn to sleep on their stomach or their side because subconsciously they know they don't sleep well. They don't breathe when they sleep on their back. And it, because of uh, apnea, because of the weight on the abdomen and, and diaphragm or the close, closing of the, the airway, the tongue, the soft palate, when you turn on your back, you're not breathing. And so subconsciously over months or years, just learn to sleep. That I sleep better on my side. I sleep better in a recliner. I sleep better on my stomach than, than on my back. And so trying to reassure that um, you might be able to learn how to sleep on your side or your back eventually. Um, now, that's if you, you sleep on your stomach mainly because you don't breathe. Um, if you have a back problem and, and you physically need to sleep on your stomach, um, and th th that's a different matter. Um, so, but you can, but most folks, even if they sleep on their, on their stomach, um, uh, and they, they usually turn their, their cheek to one side. They're not usually sleeping on their stomach with their face straight in, in, into the pillow. Um, and, uh, so again, it's very similar to sleeping on your side is feel free to sleep on, on your belly. Um, but just get the, the, the CPAP situated and then turn to the side and, and you'll you'll be you'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be able to breathe with the, the the mask. And in fact, even if you do stick your face in the pillow, you if it's soft enough, you can you should you should be able to use uh, the, the the CPAP mask uh, even doing that. Um, uh, for folks that that uh, have that situation, it it can definitely help to make friends with it and get comfortable with it. Like when you're awake, sitting in a recliner. Um, just getting more comfortable with it. Um, let's see. So discomfort, the mask, the airflow, just the airflow. And then um, the, the other thing that can make you uncomfortable and cause you to remove your mask um, and not be able to tolerate it all day or all night is um, the, the, the airflow drying um, and con uh, congesting the upper airway. And so some folks, they start out fine and uh, get to sleep. And then halfway through the night, their, their sinuses are plugged. They're breathing out their mouth, their throat and mouth are dry, or their, their nose is stinging from the airflow. 
and that can that that can definitely happen depending on the humidity relative humidity where, where you live um uh th this this can be harder in the winter if the air is cold cold dry air blowing into your sinuses causing them to swell shut um uh so um most machine back in the day when i started 20 years ago um humidifiers water chamber that uh that the airflow passes over and through before um going through the tube to 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 you th those were optional those were extra now most models of cpap machines have them incorporated integrated into the unit and not just a, only a water chamber but it's like heated it has a heating plate you can adjust the temperature you can adjust the humidity um to, to find what's comfortable for you um and um so uh adjusting the level of humidity and te temperature to find what's comfortable for you if you turn it up too high it, it's too humid it's it's warm and muggy and that might feel like claustrophobic and, and smothering um but if it's too little then it's cold dry air and it, and it can even like sting your nose especially at high pressures and so that, that takes some time to, to find the right setting um another challenge with airflow and humidity is in the winter, if your room is cold, the warm, uh, humid air from the CPAP machine um, feels good. But o over time, during the night, the the cold the cold of your room can condense water in the tubing and in the mask. And so some folks will be sleeping just fine, and then a couple hours in, they'll, they'll get a spray of some some water leaking into their nose. Um, from the condensation in the tubing um and you know startle them awake or um they'll be sleeping fine but then they'll start hearing a gurgling sound of water bubbling in the tubing um and uh, and wake them up and so uh there's there's a couple solutions for that um you can order like a little sock a little sweater for your tubing uh, for most uh, CPAP machine uh, vendors and supplies suppliers online, um, it's kind of it, it's like fleece and has Velcro in it, and it's you you wrap your tubing in it to keep it warm. Um, I mentioned this earlier. You can put it underneath your blanket. Uh, that that's what I tend to do. Um, uh, but there are some models of CPAP machine uh, from uh, brands that they have a wire a heated coil in the tubing that warms the tube um, depending on the heat setting. And so it, it can uh, prevent that condensation from accumulating uh, in, in your tubing. So that's another uh, thing that common thing that can disrupt uh, um, a night of sleep. So, all right. So um, to review, um st start with with uh focusing uh, to prevent discouragement and disappointment have healthy expectations um be patient with yourself i don't think i mentioned at the start of this i've been using the cpap machine probably 10 years um and even though i had helped folks with cpap and getting off to a good start um for many years when i took a cpap machine home and needed to use it to start using it it still took me several months to be able to use it consistently more than four hours a night i knew all the tricks um and i uh you know would coach myself and, and talk to myself and, and prep myself before um hand and um and i was still taking it off subconsciously um halfway through the night and you know you can't control what you do um when you're half asleep or when you're asleep and so all you can do is, uh, you know, prepare yourself when you're awake, um, you know, before and after. Um, so um, uh, having healthy expectations, being patient with yourself, but, but being determined and uh, persistent in, in, in using it and, and working towards that goal of sleeping better and feeling better, it makes such a difference um, in, in your, in your, in your health and how you feel uh, physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, uh, you know, 
in the here and now, but then in, in the future for preventing uh, uh, heart disease and diabetes and, and all that, uh, you know, high blood pressure. Um, so, and then, uh, so expectations get, uh, you know, small steps, um, patience and persistence, and then um, finding the mask that fits for you. So, um, you know, they, they make, uh, I would say dozens of different models and, and styles, and it can be spendy depending on your insurance. Um, you know, you might not have the luxury of being able to try a whole bunch of different masks. So kind of, um, you know, hopefully working with your provider to, to find the best model and fit for you. Uh, just kind of being aware of like your, your sleep habits. Like if you toss and turn a lot, and, you know, if you're a slight side sleeper, that can help you make the, the determination. Oh, I forgot to mention a few things. Some folks, they think I'm a mouth breather, so I need a full face mask. Well, a lot of people, they're a mouth breather because they have apnea, their airways closing, and subconsciously their body tells them you need to drop your jaw. You need to open your mouth so that you breathe because you're not breathing. And so for very many people, once they start using the CPAP machine, they stop having to breathe through their, their mouth. Um, but it can be a hard habit to overcome. So sometimes having a chin strap that kind of keeps your chin and your lips closed um, can, can solve that problem until you get into the habit of sleeping with your mouth closed. Um, and, um, but your doctor can do an exam and, you know, and, and kind of see, and some folks, they go to ear, ear, nose and throat to see if they have a deviated septum. Um, so if you have a deviated septum, if you've had a broken nose, if you have allergies, if you really do struggle with nasal congestion and it's hard to breathe in and out and exhale against the pressure of the CPAP machine, it can definitely help to get a full face mask. The downside is your throat and mouth can get dry even with a humidifier um, with a full face mask. So I tend to encourage folks to start out with the nasal mask and try to get used to it and learn how to, to use it, you know, give it a good shot before switching to the full face mask. Cause the, the more uh, surface area there is to, to get a good seal, the, the more likely it is that, you know, it's going to hit the pillow and have a leak. The more likely it is that you're going to have to tighten it kind of snug to, to keep a good seal. Um, so if you can try to get used to a nasal mask and nasal pillows um, before uh, switching over to a full face mask. Um, I think that's it. Um, feel free to um, comment and um, check out the other videos or, or episodes or oh, videos on sleep that I've done on my channel. If you're interested in um, learning more about sleep um, and uh, the here, here uh, one website that's really helpful uh, uh, about sleep is sleepfoundation.org. That's the National Sleep Foundation website. If you don't struggle with sleep apnea or snoring, but you're struggling with, with uh, insomnia, I encourage you to check out uh, my website. I, I've done a few uh, blogs with some uh, other websites and apps and, and YouTube videos uh, about uh, different types of insomnia, circadian rhythm disorder, and improving the quality of your sleep. Thanks for listening, guys. I hope you're sleeping well. I hope you feel rested. And if you have a friend or family member who um, is getting started on their CPAP machine, or um, maybe um, it would help for them to like give it another try, I encourage you to share this with them. Thanks.